Hello everyone, today I've got something a little bit special to me. I spotted this on a local ad and I literally leapt at the chance to buy it. Now look at that, cherry sunburst. And it's beautiful. 15 years old nearly. It's absolutely beautiful. There's not a mark on it. The person who bought this bought it when he was about 19. He played it, he said, about five times. Then put it in the cupboard and he's only found it because he's just sold his house and he's clearing out well, look at the binding on there lovely binding take you around it humbuckers there i don't like them knobs size of them Dot fretboard. Now, it's a signature series guitar, and I don't know if you know what they are, but I will reveal it soon. Let me tell you some stats about it. It's very hard to find any information on this guitar, and the people that made it have actually removed it from their site for some strange reason. The link's still there, but you go there for the specifications, and they're not there anymore. I've had to piece this together from information on the internet, but it's so varied. Some people say this is an awful guitar, but I've found that reading deeper into it, most of them have never played, have never owned it. They've probably played it quick in a store, but the stores it was sold in as a cheap guitar is not really the environment you could play it in. It was stores like Walmart in America and Argos in England. So, couldn't really play them in them stores, could you? I know some guitar shops stock them and you tend to find people who found them in guitar stores in England had more praise for it let's give you some specs that I found out this is supposed to be a solid body that's definite but some say it's mahogany some say it's plywood so there's both ends of the spectrum for you it's heavy. It's as heavy as my Les Paul Gibson. So, some say it's 11.5 pounds, some say it's 9.5 pounds. I've not actually weighed it, but I will do just to find out the exact weight of it. I'd say it was more virgin on 11.5 pounds. Now, dual classic humbucker pickups are in it. Usual dot inlays on the fretboard. As you see, cherry sunburst finish, which is absolutely gorgeous. This was made as an entry level instrument. Now, what shocked me? Rosewood fretboard. And if we turn it around, if you excuse me for one moment. In fact, I'll pause this while I turn it. Now, a maple neck. Look at that, quite cheap tuners those. That just had a white piece of paper, but obviously it was a sticker that said made in China. There is the big reveal. This guitar, look at that scarf joint there. That's it. Now, yeah, big reveal, it was made by Gibson. It's a Gibson Baldwin. Les Paul. Now, this beautiful condition again on the back. Now, most people slated this guitar, said it was crap. But as I said, when you read further into it, most of them people never owned one. And I'll take that as the usual Gibson snobs. Most people that owned one said the same thing, which was, out of the box, this was chronic. Because of the quality control. And I'm inclined to agree with them. The man I bought this off said he never touched it. Obviously. Like I said, I ne he never learned to play the guitar. He played it for about three weeks and that was it. So it's untouched and it's as new. This is how it would have came out of the shop. Now, I can see straight away some problems. Now, most people say them tuners don't hold tune. Now, I tuned this in last night. And left it leaning up against the chair all night. And I played it again this morning. 
and it's perfectly in tune and the strings are 15 years old so that's not true they all tune perfectly the truss rod cover is cut awful or the screw holes have been put in awful because that is wonky now as you can see the nut is slightly wonky it's going to the right as you look at it on the screen so that needs to be moved over taken off and just adjusted the frets get slaughtered on the internet saying that they're all over the place i've not checked the levels and they say that they're uh taken off on the edges and filed down too far which these are not these are absolutely lovely big frets they might be all over the place i haven't checked but the fretboard definitely needs some treatment because this is dry as a bone, as you can see. So I'll definitely be doing that. All the dot inlays are fine. The binding on it's lovely. The pickups when I played it sound all right, but the action is massively high, so it's really got to be adjusted. There's a problem with one of the tone pots, so I've got to sort that out. So I think that might just be a bit soldering, hopefully. Hopefully I won't have to rewire it or redo the pots. Or change them, should I say, not redo them. It's got a wraparound bridge, which I found fascinating for that long ago, but there you go. But I will be checking it all properly. But I've set myself a challenge, because I've seen a couple of things online, a couple of videos on YouTube that you could look up. People have done restorations on these, and they've gone mad. They've changed pickups, they've changed fretboards, they've taken out frets and refretted it. I mean, that to me is crazy. For a guitar that was like £150, I think £189 in Argos and £149.99 in a guitar shop. It might have got a little bit cheaper. But, like I say, the people that bought these or said that they were crap, of people that didn't buy them and just said yeah i played them in the shop well considering they were sold in america in places like walmart and over here argos amongst other places i know but mostly they were sold in argos there wasn't really the environment and walmart is like an asda in america not really environment to play a guitar is it some were in guitar stores as far as i know i don't know whether any were sold in english guitar shops if they was and there is a couple of reviews of people saying that they were they're they're more favourable. So whether the you know the shop Luthier had touched it and done it because the quality control coming out of the box is chronic, and you can see that on here that it's not great. But it is a cheap entry level guitar, and I think they were done for educational purposes. So like they say. People that get given these guitars don't treat them like their own. So I think they were cheaply put together and quickly put together. But if you know the specifications of this guitar for definite, please put in the comments and let me know or email me. I'd love to know the actual... I'm going to keep looking. But what I've set myself a challenge to do is... Try and get this guitar playing perfectly. Now, I brought it home last night and I and I played it quickly. And I couldn't really get it to tune properly. And I checked the neck and it was out. So, I adjusted the truss rod a little bit. And then I tuned it up and it tuned fine. And it played lovely. And that's with 15 year old strings. So... I think I've got a lot of uh, problems with this guitar. I think I'm really looking forward to getting on this guitar. But like I say, I will be addressing those issues and anything else that comes along. And I'll do it along with you. So I'm going to play it now as it, st as it stands. The action's m like really high at the moment. It's not comfortable to play at all. But I'm going to give it a play just so you can get an idea of the sound. Clean and with a bit of distortion. And then pickups. Okay, and then I'm going to start the work. And I'll take you through it with me and see how it goes. I've promised to only use stuff in my spares. And I'm not going to order anything in. Obviously, strings I'll have to change. But I'm not getting no new pickups. I've got an idea for the pickups. I might do it. I'll let you know near the time. Them tone knobs, I hope I've got some spares. Because they're horrid. If not, they'll stay. But, oh, I don't like them. But like I say, it's all there. Brilliant condition. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to do what's there and do the best with what I've got. Try and adjust it and see if I can get this sound in 
fantastic. So bear with me, folks. Right, here we are, the first test. I've not adjusted anything. At the moment, all I can see is that that action is so high. Right, the bridge pickup. It's hard to play. Sounds all right. Both pickups. Again, up here is hard to play. It's even bending it really out of tune. It's so high. Pick up. Okay, let's try a little bit of distortion on it. Okay, we'll start from the neck pick up. Easy to play with a bit of distortion. This bridge pick up. Quite powerful. Might be a bit low, might need to. That might just need a bit of a bit of lift. Just adjust that. sound all right but it's really like I keep saying it it's so hard to play it's so high this action don't know whether you'll be able to see it I don't hold the finger on the strings it's just really high so up here is almost impossible to play but One of the volume pots don't work. Get that into. I think one of the volume pots don't work. These knobs have been put on wrong. It's actually saying zero when it's turned up full. So I'll have to uh, change them over. Again, quality control problem, that's all. The hardware, so far, is spot on. Absolutely spot on. They sound lovely, the humbuckers. Sound like humbuckers. Definitely got a Gibson -y, uh sound to it but I know we can improve on that because the intonation's out which would be fun because it's a compensated uh, fixed um, bridge so that'd be a bit of fun uh, and it's so high the action so I'll try and lower it it might be high because the frets are so bad but we'll have a look anyway and take it along but for the first First impressions. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, first things first. I was on the bench. As you can see, quite a bit to do. I've adjusted the truss rod already, so the neck's got the relief I like. Um, the nut needs to be taken off and moved, as we discussed before. 
the frets all look good and I've used I mean that's all right there's no they all seem more or less the same height which is good because I didn't want them all over the place yeah they all seem fine to me I've checked along there anyway and they all seem fine so I am going to lower the action on this definitely and see where that takes us I don't know whether it needs fret dressing but as you can see I'll get that into there there's no sharp edges and they've been done nice I think they're all big old frets though jumbo frets but yeah nice they're all quite nice nicely filed nicely put in so they don't need a lot of work at all hopefully but if I do need to fret dress it I'll film it right get these strings off and give the guitar a good clean right a couple of bits I forgot to show you this uh, truss rod cover it's still got the protective plastic on it just to show a little useless guitar's head now I want to show you this now I mentioned the nut being slightly off now I've took the strings off that's actually moving see that let's try and balance it that's actually moving crazy so don't gonna take a lot of fixing is it look the gap under that anyway I can't really show you what I adjusted the truss rod. I would love to show you, but I haven't got nothing sophisticated. No cameras in there, and I've got to hold everything myself. And I'm finally, oh, look, that's just come straight out. Just with wobbling here. So, that's no problem. That won't take two minutes to fix. But, um, as I said, yeah, I would show you that. But there's lots of videos on YouTube. But I've got nothing, no cameras that I can stand up or anything. So, it's best. Uh, that is so dry, that fretboard. Anyway, let's get on with this. My wife's kindly holding the camera for me just so you can see this next bit now you've got to check there's no glue on the fretboard end here or where the nut sits luckily mine's got none because they hardly used any there's the nut I don't know if you can get that focused and that's with the glue taken off just scraped off with a knife I'm using Gorilla Glue okay so all I'm gonna do is just put a couple of blobs that's a bit much on it just drag it along there just to hold it okay that's on the bottom and I'm also gonna put some on the side okay just there just drag it along okay not loads okay use it sparingly just drag it right along like that now you've got a while before it goes off so don't panic put the nut see it in make sure this is all wiped off which i've done so there's no rubbish or dirt and you push it on but you wipe off any excess immediately that comes out it shouldn't be but just in case just wipe it off get it into position which that is perfect position and just hold it for a little while and that's it just hold it for a minute or two then let it go and then let it set There's no uh, pitting or grooves on the frets. These are lovely condition. Right, now that stops moving. So once it stops moving under your hand, without obviously you pulling it, leave it in place for a good few hours till it dries. Right, the volume and tone knobs. <clears throat> I was going to change these, but I think keep it all original. Now, some of these, see that? That's full up. That's fully down. It's on number two. 
fully down on zero. Same with that one. These ones are all right. They're on 10. Now, these just pull off. See, and that's too easy. They shouldn't come off that easy. That just pulls off as well. Now, when that comes off, the problem is these pot ends here are too close together. So it's a simple fix. Just put a screwdriver in there. Just bend them out slightly. Just ever so slightly. Don't go mad. Same with this one. Bend them out slightly. <coughs> now when you put these back on, make sure they're up full. And make sure the tens there. About there. I normally have it looking at looking down at the guitar from playing it. It'll be on ten. Same as the other. See that? When it's on ten, push it down. Ugh, see, that takes a bit now. And that you won't move with your hands. Okay, so now when that's up ten, it's up and stays on ten when it's up full. The way you get rid of these off if they're very tight. I've shown this in other videos, is you just thread a tea towel underneath them. See that? Thread it all the way underneath. Again, it's hard to do it one hand. Then pull it round and then pull it up. Okay? If you pull that up, that'll take it off. Okay? That's on solid now and I can't really do it one hand. But that's what you do. Thread it on there, pull the tea towel up and it'll pull the knob off. Okay, now I'm going to change the other one, and that's it, all them done, and that's the only problem with them. Like I said, one of these tones don't work, it's this one, and I'm going to take the back off and have a look at the electrics. I'll show you, how I always undo the pickups and have a look inside, see the wires there, make sure they're okay. I've had that one off already, that's all fine, and the wires going through there, that's all fine. Okay, they're unmarked pickups, so I don't know what they are. I don't think they're Epiphone. They'd be labelled if they were. I did think that maybe Epiphone would be in them, but they're not. So, I don't know what they are. Anyway, I'll put that back on. But like I say, just, I'm doing that just to check the wiring. Okay, and you do that just by undoing the four screws around the white pickup rings. Little video here with the electrics on the switch. All absolutely perfect. So that's all checked. And there's the upper cavity. Oh, mini pots. Just cheaper, that's all. But, oh, that looks alright. There's a wire off down here at the back. I don't know if you can see it on there. But that's all, it just needs a bit of soldering. So I'll solder that on, and that'll cure the problem with the uh, tone knob. So that's quite simple. All of it looks quite tidy. All the, uh, Solder points are quite tidy. Probably just over the years that's come off. Maybe a bit of a dry joint. We're just moving about. Who knows? But anyway, I'll solder that back on and see how we go. So, so far, we've done the knobs and put them back on. Took them off and put them back on straight. So they actually point to where they are. I've checked both the uh, humbuckers out. They're both fine. All the wiring's inside fine. All the wiring's fine for the switch. Just a bit crackly, but it's just age. I'm going to spray some compressed air in there, see if that fixes it. Um, around the back and around all these little mini pots, the little cheap pots, there was a, a wire off for this tone pot here. Um, I tried to film it, but whilst I was in there, moving the wires out of the way, trying to film it in a possibly small and dark space, two other wires come off. So I've resolded them and thought, well, I won't check the text fate anymore. And I pulled them all. And tested them all they've all got strong joints so that's all the electrics serviced that's nice this fretboard still needs to be treated the nut is done that's on truss rods done them tuners i've realized look like the fake tuners you find on, or the not fake tuners the tuners you find on fake epiphone it's interesting isn't it? anyway they're good tuners they hold tune they're just the same as the, uh, see that? But they're all one part. That's a sure sign of a fake Epiphone normally. Interesting point to note, isn't it? Right. So, fretboard next. Just thought I'd show you. It's had a bit of oil there, rubbed in. Look at the difference. 
I mean, this was a light fretboard anyway, but look at that difference. Just thought I'd show you that. Let me carry on now. Do the rest of it. All right, this is the neck after a couple of treatments with the uh, fretboard. Oh, well. Much better. Looks much better. Now, tidy up a bit and restring her. Right, I can give you a quick lesson in intonation. Um, I'm not a big one on intonation. Obviously, I, I, I do intonate all guitars, but I don't panic about it. I don't get obsessive over it when they've both got to be, you know, both notes have got to be bang on. This is a compensated bridge, obviously, and I'm going to talk more about that in a little while. Okay, but what you have to do really is make sure you've got a tuner. Now, tune the harmonic at the top fret to the E, and then it's got to be the same as the fretted note of the E. See, that's a bit bit sharp. So what you do is you get your Allen key and you wind it in. It's just ever so slightly to screw it up. That brings the bridge further back. And you can see it's gone flat. So you retune it. That's it. So it's back on. The fret note is the same note, it's a bit sharp still. Well, nearly there, so that really I'd leave. So it's the same. If it wavers a little bit, just leave it. It hasn't got to be spot on because they are pieces of wood at the end of the day. They're the same that should have done the B. There you go, see it wavering, but don't worry, that's close enough. Okay? You can spend all your spend hours trying to get it bang on, and you probably never will. Because like I say, they're bits of wood. Okay, so with this guitar, you can only really do the top E, which is this one, and the bottom E, which is this one, because of these screws. Okay, and remember, if it's sharp, wind it in. If it's flat, if it's before there, okay, then you unscrew it. Okay, and gently, a little bit at a time, a little bit makes a lot of difference. Okay, then you have to retune and then do it again. But this is all intonated now. Now, I'll speak to you about this bridge a bit more. Now, I just wanted to draw your attention to the bridge that they put on the Gibson Baldwin. It's called a compensated wraparound bridge. Okay, now these are very common. In fact, I've got one on my Gibson Junior, which I've pictured on the right. Now, I want to say a couple of things about this bridge. Firstly, it was invented for quite a few reasons, but the intonation reason it was invented for is to make it easier and to give it more stability. Now, it makes it easier because you haven't got to intonate every single string. You just intonate the high E string and the low E string. Okay, and you do this like I showed you in the video before. And that, to quickly recap, is that you uh, play the harmonic at the 12th fret and then fret the note at the 12th fret. And if that note is sharp, you screw up the grub screw. Okay, this will move the uh, bridge further away from the nut. Now, if it's flat, you un you loosen the nut, uh, the grub screw. So this moves it closer to the nut. Okay, and then once you've got the high E string intonated as close as you can get it, and the, uh, the top E intonated as close as you can, the rest should follow. Okay, so that's the idea of it. And largely, as I've seen a lot of these on setups and repairs, and uh, I've had guitars with these on, like I said, my Gibson Junior's got it on, it works fine. Okay, now, if you notice on the right-hand side of the Gibson Junior, of the Gibson Junior picture, you'll see, if you go to the G string, you'll see that the moulding is set back. Now, you'll notice that on Stratocaster Bridges, here's a photo, and you see that the G is set, like, you know, set further back. And also, if you look up all wraparound bridges, and all that I've seen, you'll see that that is set back. They are the usual positions of intonation roundabout, which is why they mould them in that position. Okay, but if you take a look at the Gibson Baldwin one, it's been set forward for some reason. Okay, now I don't know who signed off on that, 
but that really doesn't work because the strings are inlated fine but I found the G string to be sharp which it will be because it's set too far forward there's no way I can move that back individually okay so I have to intonate the top E and the low E the A is fine the B is fine the D is okay the G is sharp and there's no way to correct it now the only way to correct that and I've looked on the internet and I've found two bridges and they're quite cheap these are both from Amazon there's one which has got the correct mouldings like all the other wrap over you know wrap around bridges or compensate bridges that I've seen and here's another one this is for the obsessives okay you can put this bridge on wrap around okay and change each string or intonate each string now I'd like to tell you something about intonation because people always worry about it it's not something to worry about it's quite easy the trouble is and it's going to be very controversial this you get intonation obsessives okay that go on and wanting perfect intonation okay now to me and I've done enough guitars there is no such thing as perfect intonation okay all you can do is intonate the strings as close as you can these are pieces of wood it's not an electronic piece of equipment that can be tuned up perfectly okay you just get it as near as you can the fact that you use tremolos and bending of strings takes your intonation out anyway but apart from those the simple placing your finger on a string or vibrato you know the weight of your finger even can have a big effect on the intonation of your guitar so there's no need for it to be absolutely spot on rigid perfect you just intonate as close as you can don't become obsessive over it now these bridges wraparound bridges are perfect for people that don't know how to intonate or really you know don't want to be bogged down with intonation and they are a good idea largely but this has been molded wrong in my opinion i can't understand why it's been done or why it's been signed off that that g position has been moved that far forward it was obviously always going to give you a sharp note and it does the guitar plays fine i mean you can't really notice it the guitar plays fine up and down the neck especially in the open position it's absolutely fine but that g is sharp on the intonation and it could have been set so much better okay so i hope that helps with the intonation well here we are all done all tuned up intonated cleaned etc that's low let's turn this up a bit does sound lovely Much easier to play now that action's been taken down. 
But this really comes alive when you put a bit of distortion through it. See yourself as a bite in the middle. But it sounds great, and that's it, done. Well, just to sum up, I think the people are right on the internet that say that the bad points are the quality control. I think that's what the problem is with this guitar. It's definitely the quality control. I don't agree with the Gibson heads that this is just crap. Crap guitar, crap pickups, everything's terrible, don't bother. I think if the quality control was done right, then it could have been a very good guitar for a beginner. Um, the quality control was lacking, even on this one. I mean, the knobs have not moved themselves over the years. Uh, the nut has not come wonky over the years. If that was knocked, that would either just be off or loose or whatever, you know, but it wasn't. It was still fixed, even though it was fixed badly. Uh, so that's not happened over the years. The fretboard was bone dry. Now, I could have said that that has dried out over the years, but I've seen a lot of photos on the internet of these guitars for sale, and the fretboards all look the same, or, or a lot of them do. There are some with dark fretboards, but I don't know whether they've been treated, obviously. But there's a lot on there where the fretboard's bone dry, like my one. Uh, the truss rod needed adjusting. Whether this happened, you know, over the years again, or whether this was uh, outside the box, out of the box, uh, who knows? You know, you get a guitar that's fifteen years old. How can you tell what was wrong with it? You know, the day you bought it. But um, that possibly could have been an issue. You know, as with the other things, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, that compensated bridge is an abomination. Whoever thought of that is just mad. I mean, I've I've looked since making this video. And uh, there are a few people that mention it. And there's actually Luthier on YouTube that's bewildered as well. And uh, I'm just as bewildered. I don't know what they would think of that compensated bridge. That that G intonation is just terrible. That's never going to be intonated ever. So I don't know what they were thinking there. 
So to buy a guitar and then have to take it to a luthier or to do work on it yourself isn't great, is it? So let's be honest. Even though I've had Gibsons delivered here, you know, straight from the factory and the shops, and they've needed a total set up, so it's not unknown or unusual. Uh, it's just that as a beginner's guitar, you'd expect this to be at least playable, and it's probably what put the uh, original owner off. Uh, but the good point of it is that it looks gorgeous. I think the pickups are better than any entry level or you know low end Epiphone that I've played. You know, so the pickups have got a lovely bite on them, and it does sound Gibsony. Low end uh, Epiphones don't give me that Gibson sound. They're good, don't get me wrong, but especially the entry level Epiphones definitely don't give that Gibson sound. They've got like a unique sound of their own. But you know, you get the middle of the range or the high end Epiphones, they really give Gibson a run for their money. Um, but this definitely sounds Gibsony. I don't know whether you'll agree. Uh, it was only recorded on the phone for a boss amp, so. I'm not sure, really. But they've definitely got some bite to them, and they're definitely powerful, definitely. Um, it doesn't feel as comfortable to me as any Epiphone. You know, even the entry-level ones, they're nice and light. This is very heavy. Uh, to play, it's all right to play. It's a lot better since I love the action, but it still doesn't feel as comfortable as an Epiphone to me. So I think uh, if I was given the choice, especially as a beginner, I would definitely still choose an Epiphone. Um, but this is a fantastic piece of history, I think, whether Gibson want to disown it or not, you know, this, it is a brilliant piece of history, I think, and I think it's definitely a collector's guitar rather than a player's guitar. Uh, I can see these rising in value just for the sake of people hanging them on the wall, you know, like the old catalogue um, squires you used to get years ago, you know, the Japanese squires, and I know they were uh, better made, but some of them are terrible still. I still remember my catalogue one was bad. Uh, but anyway, so definitely in conclusion, I would say a collector's guitar, definitely, rather than a player's guitar. But thanks for watching.